G'day, it's uh, it's Tuesday morning, and as promised, I said I would put together a, a VFL report. Um, I had the opportunity to get down and watch our VFL team play against Werribee, um, who are a standalone team in the VFL competition, on Saturday, beautiful day, um, at Churnside Park, which is, yeah, it's, it's a torpedo punt. Literally, it's a torpedo punt from, or a couple of torpedo punts um, from my house. So I walked down there with with one of my boys, and we had a yeah, we had a nice afternoon in the sun, um, watching a really high standard of football. Um, I put that on the table straight away. This this VFL competition is is excellent in regards to the standard of football. Um, and when you get the opportunity to go to a suburban ground such as Churnside Park, which is a magnificent venue, it really is. It's arguably one of the best football grounds um, in Victoria. And I'm talking about suburban football grounds, the facilities, the setting, uh, the surface, just everything. Um, and you get to get up so close to the action. It is a great experience. I'll put that, I'll put that out there straight away. Um, but in saying that, I don't get to many VFL games, and I can't remember the last time I watched one of one of our games live. It may have even been the last game of twenty twenty two when we played when it was a curtain raiser at the MCG. That last game against Collingwood, yeah, I think that was the last time. I didn't even watch the whole game. I remember drifting over before an opening game of the year at the MCG when we were playing Richmond and there was a practice match going on at Punt Road and our VFL boys were playing that day as well, but I only watched a quarter. So this is the first time I've actually watched a full game um, live. I mean, I've watched games online, I've watched games when they've been on Channel 7, sometimes I'll, I'll watch a few replays here and there and re read match reports, but generally I just don't go. I'm certainly not going to necessarily waste my time, although they are playing Casey in round seven this Friday, um, a strange time at 10 past five at Icon Park. No, I won't be going to that. But it was convenient for me to get down to Churnside Park and um, and watch this game. So I thought I'd put a report together um, because you do, you do, when you see these boys who we don't see all the time play, uh, live, you can make a better judgment on them. It is a, as much as it is a really good standard of football, uh, the VFL, um, and I made a really good standard. It's the, the second best competition in Australia. Um, and, and so is the Sample and the Waffle in Western Australia. But um, it's a strange comp. It really is. You've got your your standalone clubs such as Werribee and Port Melbourne and Williamstown and Frankston and Coburg and yeah and 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 then you've got your then you've got your your AFL teams um, who are half and half. You've got your your AFL listed players and we had eleven play on the weekend against Werribee. Eleven out eleven of our AFL listed boys who I'll talk about shortly. Um, and then it almost appears that the rest are just sort of ring-ins, um, which isn't the case. It isn't the case. I know that it isn't the case. But when do they actually train together? Like when does, you know, the likes of Billy Wilson and Jack Carroll and Dominic Q and Sam Durden and Binz, who plays a lot of EFL football, and Ashton Moyer and Lemmy, et cetera, et cetera, when do they actually train with these non AFL listed players who are part of our VFL program. Do they train with them once? I don't know. It just, it just doesn't feel right. And that show, that shows every time either I watch this team on TV or, um, and, and definitely when I watched them on the weekend against Werribee, it just doesn't appear to be this connectiveness. Doesn't, it doesn't, our VFL team doesn't feel like a real team. Um, but it's funny because you look at you look at the ladder and Footscray, who are exactly the same as us, they're sitting on top of the VFL ladder. Geelong a, th a third, Box Hill a fourth, Richmond a fifth, Gold Coast Suns a, a, a seventh, GWS a eighth, 
and and Sandringham, who are St Kilda, they're they're ninth. So they're all in the top ten, which is a top ten competition. Uh, top ten will play finals, and we're second last. So I'm not saying um, I'm not saying that you can't get your act together and have really good camaraderie and and connectiveness and and be a be a really good team and have a, 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 some success at VFL level, but. I don't know, I just feel like, and I know a lot of it's to do with injuries, um, just feel like we never never get this part of our program right. Um, and it almost feels like it's just, just a matter of trying to develop these players on our list, the younger players, and give them an opportunity and develop them uh, the best they can do. And there's no emphasis on winning a game of football at all. That's the impression... I get. Um, it was a strange sort of atmosphere there on Saturday watching this game. There were only, and I, I mean only, maybe this wasn't the case, um, but I went out to the quarter time huddle and I also went out to the um, the three quarter time huddle because you can, can get onto the ground, you can go listen to the Luke Power, who is the coach, and get up close to the line coaches. I think um, Tom Lonigan was taking the defenders and um, there was only three of our senior boys there watching this game that I saw. Um, and that was Jordan Boyd, Lewis Young and Ollie Hollands. Only Jordan Boyd and Lewis Young had played the night before and Ollie Hollands, who was supposed to play in the VFL, was a laid out. He was managed. They were the only three senior players that I saw at the game. Um, so maybe maybe the others had something on. I'm not quite sure, but it just did feel rather strange that there weren't more of our senior boys there watching that game. It just seemed really strange. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the case was with that, um, but the atmosphere and the connectiveness and the... I don't know, the enthusiasm just didn't seem there and it sort of showed in the game, it really did. Um, we were well beaten by Werribee, we were never in it, 32 point loss. Um, I wasn't there to look at system and structure and all that type of stuff. I was pretty much there just to have a look at our AFL listed boys and a few of the non-AFL listed players that we might be having a look at come mid-season draft time where we're probably certain we're going to select two players in that mid-season draft. So, yeah, we're sitting second last um, on the VFL ladder. Ironically, the Northern Bull Ants, who we used to be aligned with, um, are bottom of the ladder um, with no wins. We've only just had the one win, although we've only played five games. Some teams have played six. But there's other there's other teams down there as well. I mean, Essendon are going okay in the, uh, in the seniors at the moment. They're 19th. Collingwood are 15th. Uh, Sydney Swans are 14th, Brisbane the 13th. So there are a few other teams maybe in similar boat to us. But, yeah, I wasn't really impressed um, with the whole show. I did see Brian Cook there. He was there walking. Or he had his dog with him. Um, at one stage there, he wanted to go to the, the public toilet inside uh, inside Chernside Park, and he had his dog on a leash and I actually was going to run over to him and say, listen, mate, I'll hold your dog for you if you want to go have a piss. But he ended up picking the dog up and taking the dog into the toilet with him. Brad Lloyd was there, um, saw him there, and, and, and Michael Voss as well. And another another interested onlooker was our list manager, Nick Austin. Um, obviously, they're looking at, at, our, at our boys go about their business. Maybe having a look at some of the Werribee players running around. They're a very strong team. They played in the grand final last year, although they're decimated with injury at the moment as well. They were coming off two two back-to-back -back losses and a really big loss against Williamstown. Quite a few players out, but they do have some talent running around at uh, Werribee. So maybe he was keeping a close eye on them as well. But there were some players, non AFL listed players that, you know, the likes of Xavier Ma, Ned Kale, Lockie Young, who's the skipper of this team, um, Liam McMahon, the sort of hybrid 
rangy forward and, and maybe Heath Ramshaw as well, but none of them set the world on fire. None of them at all. In fact, they all had relatively quiet afternoons. So I'm not quite sure if I'm looking at any of those, Ned Kale, Xavier Ma, Lockie Young, Liam McMahon, Heath Ramshaw, just based on that game, I'm thinking, nah, nah, I wouldn't be necessarily, I'd be pretty disappointed if, if, we're, if we're plucking one of those um, out of the out of our VFL team and putting those onto our AFL our AFL list at the mid season draft. Um, anyway, let's quickly go through our AFL list of boys. As I said, there were eleven playing, um, and it's really hard to assess because I thought Werribee dominated, although they only won by thirty two points. Um, we are a little bit decimated, particularly in the midfield. Uh, was there a hell of a lot of support? They dominated inside 50s. In fact, there was an avalanche of inside 50s in Werribee's favour. Although they didn't necessarily execute on the scoreboard, they did dominate the game. Um, but I thought overall our AFL-listed boys were probably the better players on the day, which was a, which was a positive. So I will start with um, the Irishman, Rob Monaghan, who's getting some experience at, at VFL level this season. And he's a, he's a player, he only had the seven touches. And yeah, it was a very, very quiet afternoon for Rob Monaghan. I did notice him a couple of times, but he didn't, he didn't get involved. Um, yeah, he didn't have any impact. I didn't see any of that power. I did see him hit a few targets. So he's actually got quite nice skills. Um, by foot, and he's got some speed. I've seen that in the past, but he had a quiet, a real quiet um, afternoon. And it's definitely for him is going to be a development year, and we can't make any real judgments on Rob Monaghan um, for a good 12 months or so. So, uh, yeah, it was. I just didn't notice him. Next one was Harry Lemmy. Um, now, Lemmy, who last year predominantly played as a as a uh, as a center half forward in his first season coming across from South Australia but then when Alex Murkoff went down early in the year with that heart condition Hudson O'Keefe and Harry Lemmy shared the ruck roles and, and and then sort of rotated forward this year they've put Lemmy back um, as a key defender now he started as a key defender against Werribee had no real impact in that position. We were actually down back a little bit top heavy. We had Durden and also a Q playing. So Lemmy did twist his knee, went off the ground, came back on with his knee bandaged, seemed to be moving okay, then went forward um, and spent the second half up forward. Only had the eight disposals and, and two goals. Kicked a nice snap goal in the last quarter, but it had no impact at all. On the game, other than that, it was another. It was a quiet afternoon for Harry Lemmy. Um, he's a he's a massive lad. He's a massive boy. Um, he doesn't. I, I wouldn't say he's got great athleticism, um, but he's big. He is big, um, but he's not strong. So yeah, I think I think second year in this competition, um, he's a fair way off. He's a fair way off. Um, on what I saw on the weekend. Um, next boy I'd like to talk about is Ashton Moyer. Now he was our top draft pick from last year. He started forward and was well held, but we just didn't get he just didn't get the supply. I think we were well beaten inside fifties. Um, I actually felt a little bit sorry for him because it was almost like he was starving of opportunities. He started deep, get up the ground, but we were just not getting those clean possessions, Werribee were excellent in close, in tight. So any possessions we were getting were under pressure going inside our forward half. So it was a tough day in regards to supply. Um, and you have to remember these standalone clubs, although they don't have AFL listed players, they're very, very experienced footballers, um, you know, big footballers, big, strong footballers who have aspirations of maybe getting picked up um, in the mid-season draft themselves. So they're not playing on mungs. Um, and he's an 18-year-old kid um, playing on season bodies, and he had a tough day at the office 
the good thing was in the second half, they pushed him up onto the ball, saw him deep in defence at times, trying to work his way into the game, got his hands on it a little bit, only laid the one tackle, which is a little bit disappointing in regards to his defensive pressure, but it was a quiet day. He wouldn't be putting his hand up for senior selection based on that. Um, Hudson A. Keith, I thought... Actually, I'll start with Alex Murkoff. We dominated the hitouts. We dominated the hitouts. I mean, when you got Alex Murkoff, who's uh, who's seven foot ten, um, and Hudson O'Keefe, who's a who's a pretty big lad as well, and I and and, and the Werribee Ruckman was a tad undersized, a real competitor, a real competitor. I'll give him that. We did dominate the hitouts, but the fact that Werribee dominated the clearances because we just didn't have the numbers in there, the class in there. Um, Murkoff, 35 hitouts, but only five disposals. Uh, took a mark, but that mark was on a lead in the first quarter. He took a, a, a chess mark and kicked his first ever VFL goal. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I he's so one-dimensional. He's so one-dimensional. Um, you know, it's 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 just all about hitouts. Um, oh. I can't see a future with that um, at this stage. So I'll, I'll leave that there with Alex Murkoff. But I think it's only his second game back. So it'll be interesting to see how he develops if he can stay on the park for the rest of the year in the VFL. But unless we had a, you know, uh, the conning went down and and um, and uh, Pitnet went down, I think they'd probably go with Hudson O'Keefe. So I thought it was okay. He had 10 disposals. 23 hit outs, but the, the the thing is, he's 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 a footballer, Hudson O'Keefe. He's um, he's got some development left in him, but he had seven clearances. So um, I thought it was a, a reasonable game by Hudson O'Keefe, and I think he's having a reasonable year. Let's go to Sam Durden. Now he's come back. I think it may be his second game back after some mystery suspension. Look, he played as a key a key. Um, a key position player in the back half. You know, he played a role. He he was quite strong, 15 disposals, seven marks, uses the ball quite well by foot. Um, is, he, is he a viable option if we decided Lewis Young? Potentially, I think as a reserve, he's, he's, he's capable because he is experienced, but he didn't, like he didn't jump out to me as as having you know a standout game given the amount of forward entries that that Werribee had I was actually really surprised and impressed with Dominic Acu's game I think it's the best game that I've you know I've watched as I said I've watched a fair bit on TV and the streams they have I thought and and the training as well the the times I do go to training I think it's the best I've seen Dominic Acu performed and it was actually quite exciting to watch him play and I'm not just talking about the athleticism I'm looking at he, he didn't lay a tackle but his second efforts um his spoiling and his marking at times was was elite and his athleticism we know he's got those traits he had 18 18 disposals and I've got no doubt it was probably one of the better games he's played in the VFL um in his time at Carlton so from a positive with him, given he's on a one-year contract, it may be it may be something for him to work on and the confidence he may need. Um, I didn't mind his performance at all. I thought uh, Jack Carroll were, played a lone hand in our midfield in the first half. Thought he was outstanding in the first half. He tied. Um, he was in everything. He really battled away. He was laying tackles. He was winning clearances. Ended up with 23 disposals, but it was the weight of numbers through the middle of the ground that eventually got him. Um, I didn't mind his performance. Um, I think, you know, being dropped from the AFL and going back, um, I think he, he was one that could probably walk off that ground with his head held high. I thought he, he battled away um, really well. Um, does he have the tools to come into our team on a regular basis, consistent basis, and have an impact, I don't know. I don't know. In fact, I probably at this stage doubt it. But from a VFL perspective, um, yeah, he, he, he's a good player at that level. 
Brody Kemp, typical Brody Kemp game. 13 marks, 25 disposals. On paper, it looks really good. He's laid eight tackles. So he's worked really hard. Worked really hard, been dropped from our team, omitted and gone back and had a reasonable game. Um, you know, he's still making the same mistakes. He's still, you know, a little bit sloppy defensively. He still turns the ball over at times, fumbles at the wrong moments. But you can't ask much more than that um, from Brody, Brody Kemp. Um, he's just another one I've got doubts over now. I, I sort of like was was hoping to see some real growth in him this year. I really was. Um, but just not quite seeing it at at our level, at, at, at senior level. Um, yeah, so he had a really good game. Don't get me wrong, he had a really good game and he'd be knocking on the door to come back into the team. Jackson Bins, um, yeah, he's another one, you know, like he, he almost feels like, you know, he's had 26 disposals and the good thing was he kicked a couple of goals, yeah, he kicked a couple of goals, um, which was good. Um, I just don't know. I just don't know. I think we hear a lot about Jackson Bins and get Bins in, get Bins in, but get Bins in. But it almost feels like unless we see him in our AFL team over the course of two or three weeks, it's just going to be impossible to make a real judgment on him. And, and at VFL level, he's winning the ball. You know, he generally makes good decisions. He's working hard. He's laid eight tackles. He's kicked a couple of goals, which shows that he can drift forward and be a, you know, be a threat, not just be that wingman. But you just don't know until you see him at, at AFL level. And, and he's in his second season now and he's come on, you know, he's at late in as a sub. He's played one quarter and he's back in the VFL. And I, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, how is he going to get in? If he can only play wing, how is he going to get in? Because at the moment, you know, it looks like we're going to prefer Akers and, and Cottrell and Ollie Hollands and all that type of stuff. So when will he get his opportunity? I'm not quite sure, but I just don't know the plans for Jackson Bins. I really don't, because his size is a concern, his strength is a concern. But you look at that and the question marks on him have all been around tackling. And he's laid eight tackles and a really, I suppose, a really sort of tight contested game because Werribee are a really strong physical team. So I think that's a positive. And I'm going to finish off with Billy Wilson because I thought he was by far our most impressive player on the ground, which was a real highlight from my perspective. Um, hadn't seen him other than that training. First time I'd seen him live um, in regards to playing. And, and to be perfectly honest, first time I'd seen Ashton Moore as well. Um, and he was really impressive. Uh, that's a couple of games now that he's 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 played, and he's a kicker. I, 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 he's a kicker. He's had twenty three kicks and four handballs. He's a distributor by foot. He is a beautiful user by foot. He makes really good decisions. Um, he's still got a lot to learn defensively, um, but he's. He's a calm character. He gets involved. He wants the ball in his hands. He wants the ball in his hands, um, which was impressive from my point of view, playing as a small defender. And he's got that, he's got that turn of speed, one. Um, he, he can get in and out of traffic, two. He's got that, got that sort of Nick Dacos type body, the low centre of gravity, the short legs, the bandy legs, um, which one gives you, looks like gives you some speed, but also really well balanced. It was a, it was a really good display. And I could see at the three quarter time huddle that the, the line coaches and Voss went over to him and had a word in his ear that they were impressed with what they saw from him. Um, and yeah, I was impressed. I think looking at him, he looked to be a standout for us. And if I'm looking at all those players on our list, um, he's one that I don't know if I'm overly excited about because you just gotta wait. You just gotta wait. It's such a it's such a long process. And we're seeing even with someone like Ollie Hollands that, you know, he played relatively well last year, but he it, it, it's taking him a while to find his groove in his second season. But I'm liking what I'm seeing from Billy Wilson. Um, 
Is he going to get 27 touches if he comes up and plays in the AFL? Who knows? Who knows what type of role he will play if he gets his opportunity this year? The problem is, though, we have a lot of those sort of smallish, medium tight defenders. Um, but it's one to look out for, put it that way. It's one to look out for. And I think, I'll repeat, the thing that impressed me the most was he wants the ball in his hands and he's a kicker. He's a kicker. Um, he kicks the ball and he kicks it well. And he's got a little bit of speed about him and a little bit, I'm not saying flair, but it looks like he's got some confidence um, to take the game on as well. Anyway, guys, that's a wrap um, for the VFL, 25-minute wrap. Um, let us know what you think. I'll try to do more of these. If you would like to see more of these, I'm quite happy to do them. Um, yeah, and get along to more games. Anyway, I'll have a, a big preview coming up for our a game against the D's um, on Thursday night at the MCG. That will be probably tomorrow. Speak soon.